Hi, everyone. And thanks for coming to this uh, presentation. So today, I'm going to speak about web performance and most specifically, web performance that have a huge impact on the user experience. And uh, that's why this track is, uh, is called Help Me. My application is, uh, is dying. So I hope you enjoy the day and learn a lot of things through the previous tracks. Uh, let's first introduce myself. I am Nicolas Frizarin, developer advocate and engineering manager at Sphere Luxembourg. Uh, I come from Metz, France, and I'm also a Google developer expert in web technologies and an OpenGS Foundation member. Uh, yeah, yeah, in few words, I love uh, contributing to open source through speaking at conferences like today or uh, giving training, writing articles. And before starting, I would like to say you some words about my company. So Sphere is a consulting company based in France, Belgium, and uh, Luxembourg. Currently, we are hiring, so don't hesitate if you want to, to apply. <laughs> So, uh, what will we see today? First, for me, it's very important to know how and why our application is dying. And uh, just after that, I'm, we, I'm going to speak about what is really Core Web Vitals to finally focus on each matrix that compose Core Web Vitals. So, spoiler alert, these metrics are LCP, Largest Contentful Paint, uh, CLS, Cumul Layout Shift, and FID, First Input Dili. So, to be accurate, this talk is about web performance that have a huge impact on the user experience. But this talk is not about user experience itself, neither user interface or user integration. The main goal of this talk is to give you a way and tools to debug and optimize some performance metrics. So why my application is dying? It works very well. All data are displayed correctly, so all integration tests pass. So yeah, my application seems to be in a good yield, uh, but it's not totally the case because our users don't like to use our application. And more imp important, some users say it takes too much time to display the first page, or they have a blinking screen, some elements of your page pop on the screen, and the users lose their reading focus. And finally, some user complains that when they click on a button, nothing seems happen. So based on the user's feedback, we can retrieve three important information, and the first one is low speed. The first page to display is, takes too long time, and the result of this is that the users have a blank page when you launch your application. Second information is blinking screen. Some piece of page are loaded asynchronously and the page blinks a lot, and the result of this is the user loses his reading focus. And the last information is user actions takes too much time. The user clicks on the button, but it takes time before something happens. So in other words, it takes time before the data is refreshed. So at this moment, the feeling of bug is very, very, very important. And the 
users feel frustrated. And that is very bad, because if the user is frustrated, he can go to the competitor and choose another application to use. So solving this issue have no impact on graphical elements, such as color, contrast, font, image, position of elements. And there is no impact because there is no relationships between the user interface and the web performance. However, I advise you to take this aspect into consideration because having an application with a modern design with good contrast color is always a positive point for the users. So now the question is, what is impact if I solve these issues? And the answer is, we will greatly improve the user experience. So see directly something on screen, don't lose reading focus, and can interact with the page very rapidly. So to summarize, having an application which load instantly, where the user don't lose his reading focus, and can interact with your page instantly is always a positive point for the users. So the diagnosis has been made. It seems that the user experience of your application is not correct and needs improvements. Now the question is, how can we solve this problem? So we must find a way to characterize this performance problem, because currently, characterize the user experience is quite difficult. Second, we must find a way to help developer to catch these hills easier. And finally, we must find a way to summarize into category. And that's why, in 2020, Google announced that it should integrate three new metrics into its performance and tools metrics to characterize the user experience. And in 2021, these metrics have integrated into the, under the name of Core Web Vitals. So nowadays, it's very important to respect or to have a good score in Core Web Vitals because this score has a huge impact on the indexation of your application in the Google search engine results. So an application with a good score have a better index than an application with a bad score. So Core Web Vitals is a new way to calculate performance of an application. But what really are Core Web Vitals? And a following the uh, definition is as the following. So Core Web Vitals is an initiative from Google that aims to have metrics on performance of web application and user experience. So let's take the following application as an example. So my web application is deployed since four or five years in production in the web through Superbase, Firebase, Heroku, anything else. And because it's a web application, my web application has no gender, because it's not a human. Um, however, my application has three important illnesses. So the first page takes too much time to load. Users have a blinking screen. And when I click on a button, nothing happens. 
So these illness have huge impact respectively on the following metrics. So LCP, largest contentful paint. CLS, cumul layout shift. And FID, first input delay. So now we know what really is Core Web Vitals, but we don't know how to calculate these metrics. And currently, there are two ways to calculate these metrics. The first way is by fields. By fields provide real world data comes from the users in the field. So this measurement is called real monitoring user, RMU, and data collected are called field data. And the last way is by labs, and by labs provide on how potential users may experience your website. And this way, help developer to debug Core Web Vitals metrics. And data collected by Bar Labs tools is called Labs Data. So in this slide, you can see all these tools. All these tools are considered as field tools. And field tools can measure LCP, CLS, and FID. It exists another tools that is a JavaScript library called Web Vitals. And this library gives you some helper to retrieve easily these metrics and do your own business logic. So maybe you want to, to store these metrics to make statistics after. In this slide, you can see all these tools, and all these tools are considered as labs tools. Uh, labs tools are very used by developers for debugging, but labs tools can calculate LCP and CLS. They can calculate FID, and instead of calculating FID, they calculate the blocking time, which can be assimilated at this moment to the FID matrix. So question is now, why they can calculate FID? Anyone have an idea here? No? So FID is the first input DD. So the user must interact with your page to retrieve this measure. So it's important to understand that labs tools is not a substitute for field tool. Because core web vitals measurements depends on three important criteria. And the first one is the user device capabilities. Evolu the evolution, the technology is constantly evolving and no or User's device have more RAM, the processor are getting more powerful, and our application are following this evolution. So it's normal than the very first iPhone takes longer time to display the first page of your application than the last iPhone, so iPhone 14 Pro. Um, Second criteria is ne the network condition. So depends on the user location. The networks may not be the same. Indeed, uh, users based in downtown have or will have a better signal strength than a user in countryside. And last criteria is the other process that run on the device. So your device allocates a part of its processor to each running application. So this has a huge impact on the time to display your first page and the time when the user click on the button. 
So let's go to the LCP matrix, so the largest contentful paints matrix. And an official definition is the following. So LCP represents how quickly the main contents of a web page is loaded. So in other words, the LCP reports the render time of the largest image or block test within the view visible within the viewports relative to when the page first started loading. So if your LCP score is less than 2.5 seconds, your LCP score is good. If the LCP score is between 2.5 seconds and 4 seconds, your LCP score needs improvements. But if your LCP score is above 4 seconds, the LCP score is very poor and big improvements must be done. The architecture of your application may potentially be reviewed. So if you want to debug a LCP problem, it's important to understand where to start the investigation. So because the LCP is the largest contentful paint, the problem is in the initial HTML documents, usually the index.html file. So the question ask yourself is are the following. What does this document need? How is needed? And what is the size of your external parts? Another important thing is to identify your largest contentful paint resource and ask yourself the following question. How are these loaded and are these necessary when the, um, the app starts. So I think a schema is always more explanatory and visual. So in this schema, you have four colors. The blue color represents the initial HTML documents. The violet color represents the style sheets. The green color represents an image that is an LCP resource, and yellow color represents JavaScript file. So first, the browsers load your initial HTML documents. And when he finished it, it loads your style sheet. Because the style sheet depends on an image, when he finished to load the style sheet, it loads the LCP resource here, an image, in parallel of your JavaScript file. And when the largest image or block test is paint on the screen, we obtain the LCP score. Uh, I, yeah, LCP score, sorry. So solving um, LCP problem is quite complex, and as any problem, complex problem, it's easier, it was, to divide it in easier and smaller problem. So here is an example of a repartition. So first problem is time to first byte. Second problem will be resource load delay. Third problem, resource load time. And final problem, element render delay. So if you apply this repartition on our previous schema, we obtain the following. So first, time to first byte. So time to first byte is the time that takes the browser to retrieve the first byte of the initial HTML document. Resource load delay is the time that takes the browser to load your HTML documents and the style sheets. Resource load time is the time that takes the browser 
to load all your LCP resource. And as I said, he loads the LCP resource in parallel of the JavaScript files. And the element render GD is the time that takes the browser to, um, to display the largest image. So on a scale time, each problem represents a particular percent, and time to first byte represents 40 percent. Resource load DD represents 10%. Resource load time represents 40%. And element render DD represents 10%. But this is pure theoretical. So, depending on your need, maybe the time to first bit represents 30%. So, if the time to first bit byte represents 30%, the element render DD can take 20%. So how to solve a LCP problem? This is the solution. So this is a treatment. <laughs> First, preloading. Preload your style sheet, preload your image, preload style sheet and LCP resource. Then lazy load your script file. Use the differ or async attribute. Depends on your need. And with the fetch, the fetch priority attribute, now you can give a priority to the resource which are needed and loaded. And finally, split content. So just load the JavaScript or the contents needed to display the first page of your application. So if you apply all these rules, we obtain the following schema. So now you can see resource load time and resource load DD are optimized. And now, thanks to preloading, when the browsers begins to load your first HTML document file, when he discover the first resources and the LCP resources, he will load them immediately and in parallel. If you want to optimize the time to first bit, bytes, the problem is on your server side. Oh. Sorry. So now, which tool can I use to debug an uh, LCP problem? So you can use the performance panel. But if you don't use it every day, sometimes it can be very difficult to read. And that's why Google launched in Chrome 102 a new panel called Performance Insights. And performance inside give you a more visual way to understand how your resources are loaded and how to which resource you can preload. These tools can also give you some links to the documentation to understand what is the problem and give you some advice to solve it. If you want to understand how to split your content, the coverage tool will be your best friend. And in this picture, you can see a red part and a blue part for each file. The red part corresponds to the unused code, and the blue part corresponds to the used code. So now, let's go to the cumul layout shift operation. and. Cumul layout shift matrix measure the instability of contents by summing shift score across layout shifts that don't occur within 500 milliseconds of user input. So, how is CLS calibrated? If CLS score is less than 0.1 second, your score is good. If the score is between 0.1 second and 0.25 second, your score needs improvement. And 
If your score is above 0 0.25 seconds, your score is poor. And at this moment, big improvement must be done. And the architecture of your elements page may be potentially reviewed. So what, what can cause cumul layout shifts? A lot of things can cause cumul layout shifts. First one, image. Image without a good ratio, image with no size, or image with bad size. Ads, embeds, iframe, dynamically injected content can cause cumul layout shift too. Web fonts and, of course, waiting network before updates the DOM. So in this video, you can see how image can cause cumul layout shifts. So something pop on the screen and the user lose his reading focus. And in this video, you can see how ads, embed, or aframe can cause cumul layout shifts. Another time, something pop on the screen and the users lose his reading focus. So solving a CLS problem is quite simple. You, just, you must just apply some rules. First rules, size your image. Give them correct size or correct ratio. For add, embed, and iframe, get the final size of them and reserve them a static space on your page with CSS or anything else. And if the add, embed, and iframes have a dynamic size, don't place them at the top of the viewport. Place them on the right, on the bottom, on the left if you want, but not on the top because when the element will pop on the screen automatically, the user will lose his reading focus. And finally, adjust the size of fonts with the new property of CSS. So which tool can I use to debug a CLS problem? Lighthouse, Lighthouse Reports is your best friend, and you can obtain the cumul layout shift score in the metrics panel. Uh, a quick word or a few notes about Lighthouse in Chrome 103. Lighthouse reports can be loaded in three ways now. The first way is navigation. So navigation reports analyze a single page load. This is the most common reports, and all the reports before this version of Chrome are navigation reports. The second way is time spans. So time spans reports analyze an arbitrary time of a period, typically containing user interaction. And the last way, sorry, is snapshots. So snapshots, uh, snap, uh, snapshots um, reports analyze the your page at a particular state, typically containing, um, typically uh, when the user has interacted with your page. So, last metric, FID, first input DILI. So, FID metrics is a matrix that capture a user first impression of a site's interactivity and responsiveness. So, in other words, FID is a time between the moment where the user click on the button and the first line of your JavaScript code is executed. If the FID score is less than 100 milliseconds, your FID score is good. If the FID score is between 100 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds, your FID score needs improvements. And if your FID score is Above 300 milliseconds, your FID score needs improvement, and the way you write your JavaScript code may be reviewed. 
So what increased the FID? Main thread blocked. As you know, in JavaScript, you have just one thread. And to overcome this problem and write in synchronous code, we have created the event loop. And a second thing we, that increased FID is useless JavaScript. So to solve a FID problem is not complex as CLS, you must apply some rules. So split your JavaScript file, break up long task, lazy load feature and piece of code thanks to the feature of all the framework like Angular, Vue, React, with the, root, with the routing, you can, now you can now lazy load some feature. So use this feature. Optimize your JavaScript. Avoid waterfall fetch requests or third party scripts. And if you have huge business logic, use a web worker to avoid blocking the main thread. So delegate to the web worker your huge business logic. So what's the next step now? Next step now is the INP, interaction to next point, but INP is still experimentable. You can retrieve the INP in the Core Web Vitals extension, but I say interaction to next point is still experimentable. So INP is a matrix that aims to represent a page overall interaction latency by selecting one of the single longest interaction that occurs when a user visits a page. So in other words, the INP is the time between when the, between the moment where the user click on the button and the next uh, frame is painted on the screen. If the INP is less than 200 milliseconds, your INP score is good. If the score is between 200 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds, your INP score needs improvement. And if the score is above 500 milliseconds, your score is poor, and as the FID, the way you write your JavaScript code may be potentially reviewed. So if you apply all these rules, all this advice, your first page loading time is good now. Users do not lose the focus anymore, and the user can interact with the page very quickly. So well done. Now your user is not, are not frustrated anymore. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming, thanks for listening to me, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Sorry for my bad English accent, I'm French, but I'm currently on it. And thanks again. You can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn.